Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Herbert Marshall in tonight's presentation of... Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents a new radio adaptation of one of the most famous suspense stories ever written. Mary Godwin Shelley's Frankenstein. Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Hello there, Harlow. Well, mend my fences if it's not the senator. How's it look for you, Senator? Uh, 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 going to cast your ballot tomorrow, Harlow? Why, Senator, I'd no more forget to vote than forget to winterize my car. And now's the time to do it. Get the oil and grease changed, put in antifreeze, inspect the battery cable. And check the spark plugs, too. Right, Johnny Plug Check. The spark plugs are the very heart of your car's ignition system. And when they're right, your chances of starting, even in coldest weather, are better than ever. Well, I'll visit my Autolite spark plug dealer, Harlow. Do that, Senator, because he's the expert on cleaning and adjustment. And if replacements are needed, he'll recommend those world-famous ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs either standard or resistor type. To quickly learn the location of your nearest Autolite spark plug dealer, phone Western Union by number and ask for operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents transcribed Frankenstein, starring Mr. Herbert Marshall, and hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Hello, Victor. Hello, Mary. The Reverend Inn? Out in the garden, as usual. Do you want me to call him? No, thanks. I'll go out. Well, all right. Tell him not to get too dirty. We're supposed to play croquet with the McDonald's at five. I'll tell him. When's Elizabeth coming home? Tomorrow or, or Tuesday, I think. You both have to come over for dinner. Love to Mary. I'll see you later. Hi. <laughs> Oh, you're just in time to give me a hand. Whew. Now, oh, these Indian summers, hot, too sticky. James, i got to talk to you. Well, of course. What, anything wrong? You know, you haven't looked too good for the past month or so. Something on your mind? Yes. Oh, well, then. Yeah, let's go in the house. I'll get you a beer. We can talk. Uh, no, no, not in the house. Do you mind if we walk? Oh, of course not. Oh, wait a moment. I put my pipe over there. There we are. Might get some rain. Hope so. I won't have to play croquet. That's not a game. James? Oh, look now, we're friends. You know you can speak to me. What's the matter? One of your patients die? You made a mistake, perhaps? No, nothing like that. Perhaps it's worse. I'm not sure. Has it anything to do with Elizabeth going away? In a way, yes. Oh. My favorite place. You know, Victor, I think of most of my sermons standing here looking across the valley. It's lovely, isn't it? Got a match? Oh, thanks. Listen, I've been doing an experiment. It's very complicated. And I've almost finished. Well, that's wonderful. I think I'm a little afraid of it. I don't know. I've tried to think it out myself. I can't find the answer. Go on. You believe in God, don't you? Oh, I mean, because I don't go to church, you don't think that I don't believe, do you? I don't think that at all. You're a good man. I want you to promise me something. You've got to promise that you'll never breathe a word of what I'm about to tell you. You have my word. You swear? I don't usually break my word. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, I... I've made something. It's tremendous. It's impossible. But I think I've done it. And it goes against everything you believe, James. What? What have you done? I've made a... a thing. I, I don't understand. I put it together. Heart, brain, nerves, muscle, everything. I've done it. Now do you understand? A complete body. 
And you're upset because of that? You think that you've done something wrong? But... You're a surgeon. What you've done will help to save a life. If you've learned more about the human body, this experiment can't be wrong. It can only do good. Oh, I shouldn't worry. Last night, I made it move. I'm not certain, but I think I can give it life. Absolute life. Now do you see why I'm afraid? I've created a man. I, uh, I'd better call Mary. She'll be worried. All right, but... Uh, I, I won't say anything. Hello, Mary? No, I'm with Victor. Now, listen, dear, I'm afraid we'll have to put off the McDonald's. Yes, I know. Well, Mary, I, I have something very important to discuss with Victor. It can't wait. Yes, dear. No, no, don't wait supper. I'll have something over here. Yes, I will. Goodbye. You don't have to see this thing if you don't want to, James. What is it? In my lab. I had an addition built on. I'm the only one who has a key. I uh, don't say I believe what you told me, but uh, how do you know you can make it live? I mean, is it anything more than galvanic action? You'll see. I lock it. I always do. Oh. Is that the addition over there? Yes. Hmm. Dark. There aren't any windows. It's better that way. Before I show you, I want to explain. This is what started it. It was mostly an accident. One of the kids brought in his dog. It had been run over, killed. He wouldn't believe it was dead. Expected me to bring it back. I gave it a shot in the heart. And then another with this stuff. A compound I've fooled with for a long time. Yes? The dog came back to life. Just for a moment. How do you know the dog was dead? No, it was. It had been for two hours. All that happened three years ago. You've been experimenting on things ever since? Yes. It's wrong. I don't know. No, it's wrong. You don't have to stay, James. What are you going to do? Try to bring it to life? I've got to. I've got to try. Then why did you come to me? I wanted to tell you. I had to tell someone you're my friend. I'm a minister. I preach and believe in the word of God. Do you want to see it? No. No, I don't, but I must. It's not terrible to look at. I've done a pretty good job on it. But it isn't quite finished. I'm not quite done with the face. Oh, my... Well? No. No, Victor. Bury it. Let it be at peace. Don't do it. Even if you can, and I can't imagine it possible, don't. Don't, don't even try. Do you realize what it would mean to me, to the world? Standing here with you, looking at that, it's easy to imagine anything. I don't want to. Put it to rest, Victor. Forget it. That's just it. I can't. Not until I find out one way or the other. Watch. What are you going to do? I'm going to show you what happened last night. I don't want to see. I don't care. I know better. Oh, listen to me, Victor. This this mustn't go on. You've got to stop it. Not yet. Not until I find out. Does Elizabeth know what you're doing? No. Why did you send her away? I didn't want her here when I made the last test. Because you're ashamed. You know it's wrong. You know what she'd think. I'm not ashamed. I think I'm a little frightened at the incredible greatness of what I've done. It's bigger than anything since the world began. 
If it moves, if you prove your point to me, will you will you stop then? Will you destroy it? The formulas, whatever papers you have, destroy all of it, will you? I don't know. Hand me that hypodermic, will you? No. All right. There. If I say I believe you, Victor, if... You don't have to be afraid of it. It couldn't hurt you, you know. There's only enough of this stuff to stimulate a small portion of its brain. I'm not afraid of it. I'm afraid for us all. I've never preached to you, Victor. It moved its left foot last night. Then the right. I'm going to try the arm now. Move the light over, please. Thanks. Watch carefully. Only takes a few seconds. Now. Look. Look. It's hand. I know. That's the way it was yesterday. The movement only lasts for a moment, though. That's all. I, 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 I don't know what to say. I, I don't even think I understand what I've seen, except that it's terrible. Because you don't understand or because of what it means? I'm afraid, if you like. I'm afraid for you, for what you've done. That thing lying there, you've, you've got no right. I won't allow... What's that? What? Stethoscope. It's impossible. There wasn't enough. It's breathing, Victor. What have you done? The thing's alive. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Herbert Marshall in Frankenstein. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Hello, who's this Johnny Plugcheck who's always electioneering about spark plugs? Why, Senator, Johnny is a helpful hinter fighting old man Winter. He's the blithe reminder to wise motorists that now's the time to visit your Autolite spark plug dealer to get ready for the cold, driving days ahead. Change the oil and grease, put in antifreeze, inspect the battery cable. And check those important spark plugs, too. Because when your spark plugs are right, your chances of starting, even in coldest weather, are better than ever. And if my Autolite spark plug dealer finds my spark plugs need replacing, Harlow... Why, if they're worn out, he'll recommend a set of the world-famous ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, Senator, like the amazing Autolite resistor spark plug. It's one of the greatest advancements in spark plugs for automotive use in the past 20 years. When you have a set installed in your car, you'll get double spark plug life, smoother engine performance, and quick starts, as compared to spark plugs without a built-in resistor. So, friends, visit your Autolite spark plug dealer soon. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now... Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Herbert Marshall in Elliot Lewis's production of Frankenstein, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. It didn't have enough. It couldn't help. 10 cc came yesterday. Unless the drug's accumulative. Maybe that's it. His eyes are open. What are you going to do? Now? Listen to his heart again. It's got to be destroyed. You've got to put an end to it. Shh. It's inhuman. Don't you see what you're doing? You can't give it a soul. Oh, no. You can't give it. How do you know what I can give it? I've given it life, haven't I? It sees, it breathes, moves. 
Perhaps hears. Yes. Does it hear? <laughs> Look. Did you see that? It blinked. The head jerked. It hears. It's aware of sound. Does it feel pain? Don't, Victor. It's not an animal. You've formed it like a man. Give it the dignity of one. I won't let you do that to it. I've gone this far, James. Put down the scalpel. What are you going to prove by that? I think you must be mad. I don't interfere with your work, James. Why? There's someone at the door. Yes. I think I'd better strap it down on the table. You won't forget your promise, will you? I'm sorry I gave my word. I'm sorry you ever told me about this. I feel I'm as guilty as you are now. Whatever took you so long? Hello, James. Oh, uh, hello, Elizabeth. Darling, I tried to call from the station, but the line's out of order. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Did you have a nice time? Lovely. Everybody sends their love. That's good. <laughs> what have you two been up to? How's Mary, James? Oh, very well, thank you. <laughs> what a fine pair of sober sides you are. What did you do, darling? Break one of my good dishes? I knew I shouldn't have left you alone. Well... What are we standing in the hall for? Let's go Elizabeth, in the Elizabeth, uh, uh, I must be going. Mary will be wondering, particularly if the phone's out of order. It's raining very hard. Oh, no, no, I'll be all right. You'll take an umbrella. There's one in the kitchen. Are you going to tell her? No. You won't unstrap it from the table, will you? Not yet. All right, I'll try to come back later. I want to think. About what? You've changed since you came to see me this afternoon. You really don't care what I think now, do you? I suppose not. Thanks anyway, James. Are you going to let it live? That's funny from you. Have I the right to kill it? You've already done something you had no right to do. Something that you don't even understand. The creation of man isn't your job, it isn't mine. Oh, I know your bright scientific mind's laughing Here's at me. Here's the umbrella, James. But I wish you'd wait until the storm blows over. No, I, I really must get back. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'll, I'll return it tomorrow. Uh, goodbye. Well, what's the matter with him? Have you been arguing religion again, Victor? No, dear. Look, I'm doing a little work in the lab. It's rather important. Do you mind? What is going on, Victor? There's something. No, dear, nothing at all. There isn't. I know there is. What's the matter? Nothing, dear, really. I, I've got to get back to work now. off the table. It broke the straps. It's just standing there, looking at me. What do I do? Talk to it? What do I say? Can it understand I've done it? I've done it? It's almost perfect. Muscular control. Coordination. I wish I'd finished the face, though. It must be terribly strong. That's odd. It's not over average size. Now what? Can you understand what I say? Do you feel any pain? Are you hungry? I'm a man like you. You are a man. Do you understand? This is a mirror. You can see yourself in it. Look. <coughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's angry. But it doesn't show anger in its face. There's emotion, though. It sees ugliness and is afraid. 
I'll have to get it back on the table, put it to sleep. That's the best way. Then use a stronger strap or chain. The eyes, just staring. They seem watery. What a marvel it is, though. I want you to come over here and sit down. Do you hear me? Come here and sit down. Come here. No, don't touch that. No, stop it. Stop it. Put it down. to you. Who broke the window? The window. Oh, Victor. What's the matter, dear? What's happened? Did you see anyone? But no. Did someone break in? Elizabeth, don't ask me any questions. Just do what I ask. Get your coat on. But why? Th- I'm taking you over to the Gibsons. I want you to stay there. Oh, why? Why? What is it? Oh, Victor, please. And I can't... I can't tell you about it now. You may have to stay there all night. Hurry, please. We've got to call the police. No, they'll shoot it. I don't want that. It's just frightened, that's all. Oh, being a fool, Victor, do you realize what it means? That thing roaming about the country? What about the children, everybody in the village? I'm going to get the police. No, please, James. Give me a chance to find it first. Then what? You do a few more experiments, give it speech, perhaps, and it happens again? It's mine. I made it. I'm not thinking of that now. It's Mary and your wife. We don't even know where it is. If it wants to kill, how do you know where it will start? All right. Just give me an hour. Let me try to find it before we call the police. If I do, I'll take it back and destroy it myself. Do you give me your word? Yes. All right. I'll go with you. Thanks, James. I'll get my rifle. Do you have a gun? Yes. But I'm not going to use it unless it... Yes, unless. That's why I'll take mine. Shan't be mont. It's getting dark. Where do you think it might have gone? It's hard to tell. It's afraid of thunder. It might be hiding in the barn. The old Hamilton place? Yeah. How are you going to capture it if you thought of that? I brought along a hypodermic. You're not afraid anymore, are you? No. That's strange, because I am. Not of what it might do to me, but because of the fact that I've seen it. I I know it exists. There's the barn. If it's in there, there's no way out the back way. It was boarded up, wasn't it? Yes. I'll go in. Wait out here, will you? No, I'm coming with you. No. If it's in there, if it tries to escape, shoot it as it comes out. Oh, don't take the chance. It won't let you get near. I'm going to try. Thanks, James. I lied. I am afraid. And if it's in here hiding, waiting for me, I am afraid. I should have destroyed it. James was right. What's the matter with this flashlight? Wet. Ah, that's better. What's that? In the corner. I won't hurt you. It's all right. 
I understand. I won't hurt you. Don't be frightened. It's going to be all right. You'll hardly feel this. It won't hurt. I'm not sure. I might have hit it. I don't know. It's gone. Yes, are you? Victor. Victor. Oh, Victor. He never recovered consciousness again. Outside, I looked for the thing I'd shot at. But there was no sign of it. I returned to the lab and burnt every paper, destroyed every single evidence of Victor Frankenstein's terrible experiment. But the result of that experiment has never been found, nor have I been able yet to convince the authorities that such a thing ever existed. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as well as other 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to taillight, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, a story based on fact, terrifying in its truth. The dramatic report of a man returning home to find he now lives in a frightened city. Our star, Mr. Frank Lovejoy. The program will be heard on Suspense. Tonight's story was adapted for Suspense by Anthony Ellis. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis. Music was written by Lucian Morwick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. In tonight's cast, Joseph Kearns was heard as James Gibson, Paula Winslow was Elizabeth, and Paul Fries, the monster. Herbert Marshall is soon to be seen in the RKO radio picture, The Bystander. Remember next week, Mr. Frank Lovejoy in The Frightened City. resistor or standard type spark plugs, Autolite stay full batteries, and Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Your vote is important to you and your country. If you are eligible, don't forget or neglect to vote tomorrow. Remember, one vote can make the difference. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>